What's up, guys? I'm Connor Laid. We're flipping the script today. I'm moving from host to guest. Come with me to World Trade and take my path to Harrison. I'm Ali Melendez, and I'm on a journey to get closer to our homegrown players past and present on the path to Harrison. Now, today I'm joined by Connor Laid, former Red Bulls player turned senior manager of alumni and player relations. Ooh, that's a it's lot. A it's a mouthful. Oh, I need a little sip of water. <laughs> no, but I'm so excited today to be with you, to get to know your whole story, and of course, to get to know what led you to where you are today. I'm an open book, so whatever you want to ask me, I'm game. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. So here we are at Exchange Place, the first stop on the path to Harrison. Exchange Place isn't that far from Morristown where you grew up. So talk to me about what it was like growing up in Morristown, New Jersey. It was great. I got a super athletic family, actually. My, my dad played baseball in college. Um, my mom played tennis in college. And my parents sacrificed pretty much every single weekend to be all over the state country, sometimes internationally, so uh, yeah, I wouldn't be in the place I would, really I got to without them. So you were thrown into sports, whether you liked it or not, but thankfully you loved it and you fell in love with soccer at an early age. So talk to me about some of the early organizations you played with. My first club I ever played for was in Madison YMCA. I actually had a travel team. I honestly played there for a long time. And then a lot of my friends were playing over at Morris United, which is now SDA. And so I went over there afterwards and then played with a couple of smaller clubs, which it's actually come full circle now that a lot of these smaller clubs that I played for are now affiliates of the Red Bulls uh, youth programs. And so TSF Academy was the, the team I played for before uh, jumping to the Red Bulls. And I was really torn, actually, because I played baseball for a long time as well. And that was very prevalent within my family. And I played baseball up until sophomore year of high school. How did you make that decision, ultimately, to go into soccer? I decided, you know, I think soccer had the brighter future for me. And, um, you know, my parents obviously were totally on board with whatever I wanted to do. They never limited me or, you know, steered me in one direction. They let my heart kind of decide where, where I wanted to take things. And they were going to be along for the ride. I wasn't a, a big recruit coming out of, of high school. That's when I did join the Rebel Academy and I went for a trial. Fortunately, I made it um, to the U18 team and it was a little bit of a shock to me because it was the highest level I'd played at. And I was it was big for my confidence as well to step out of my comfort zone. You know, I, I had watched the Metro Stars Academy, the Red Bull Academy growing up when we'd be at similar tournaments. And when I'd sit down and watch them, it was just, the, those guys were pretty much pros to me because it was such a high level. And, you know, being immersed inside of it and uh, getting opportunity to represent the club, it was something I'll never forget. Oh, such a good story. All right, I'm going to pause you here for now. We're going to hop back on the path and head to Grove Street for more. And maybe we'll get some water. Let's do it. It's a hot day. Parched. Let's do it. Parched. <laughs> All right, well, we made it to Grove Street, the second stop on the path to Harrison. I want to talk about your time at St. John's University because what an incredible time it was. Kind of went in with zero expectations. I was just thrilled to be there playing for a top team in the country and had an awesome time uh, my first year at St. John's. We had a ton of success there. And in the summers, I'd come back and play with the Red Bull U20 team. Nonstop for you. That was it. We, you we, had we, to keep yeah, that, that going. That but that, that is exactly why you became who you became. That's it. And so we, we actually won a, a Super Y League National Championship with the U20 team. Went back and had a lot of success with St. John's. Two Big East Championships, you know, the second of which, you know, my senior year, we ended up winning in Red Bull Arena. Which... Defensive MVP, <laughs> defensive MVPs. Not going to say it for himself, so I'll plug that for him. That is not anything that you should overlook. That is an incredible, incredible thing that Yeah, happened. it was it was awesome. About a month after we won that championship in Red Bull Arena to become the fifth ever homegrown signing to the Red Bulls, you know, December 5th, 2011. I'll never forget that day. I was actually preparing. I didn't know if I was actually going to be signed. Wow. I was preparing myself to go down to the combine and, you know, fight for a spot, get drafted. But uh, it turned out that they let me know, and uh, honestly, it was one of the best days of my life. What was that moment like? Like, what were the feelings there for you when you were signing that contract? It was really surreal. It felt like an out-of-body experience, and 
probably had one of the worst haircuts of my life as well. <laughs> and it was before I actually went to a barber or anything. I think my mom was probably still cutting my hair at the time. So an agent, but no stylist. Yeah, that's that right. You know, more important. Baby choice. steps. Baby steps <laughs> at the time. You did a great job. I feel like I'm in that room with you. So good. But before we get into the early days in that first season, we're going to meet you back at Journal Square. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we made it to Journal Square, and we're getting right back into it with your first season as a Red Bulls player. What was that like? We know the feeling, but now yeah. you're an actual player. Let's begin. Yeah, it was surreal, really, walking into the locker room yeah. preseason and just dapping up Thierry Henry, and, you know, we're teammates now. I think so, that guy recognized that guy, Yeah, that's, that's my Red guy over there. That's my guy. <laughs> I had a pretty good preseason. I think I scored a goal in preseason, and so I was like, all right, things are going pretty well. And I'm making rosters uh, first couple games of the year. And then, uh, unfortunately, Roy Miller went down early on. I think it was against San Jose. I, who am I kidding? I know exactly it was against I know. San Jose. I think I made a goal in the preseason. <laughs> I think it was against no, San Jose. But, yeah, I don't remember how many games in the season, but he goes down and my number gets called. I remember warming up and Sean Ruiz, kit man, he just holds my jersey up from down the line. and. Again, the same heartbeat. Yeah. It started racing again. And so I I just remember looking at as I'm running on the field and looking up to my parents sitting there and I just can imagine the emotions was running through their minds. And for me, I mean it was yeah, one of the best moments of my life. Yeah. Uh, you rode that wave from the yeah. first time you were in, you were in. It was such a good season. Yeah, so it was uh, honestly I couldn't have drawn it up any better. And the second year was was a rough one for me. Had some had some mobs more downs than anything and I kind of carried into 2014 as well and dealing with some injuries and then wasn't playing a ton of games and we started looking at loans and trying to get somewhere where you know I could go in and hopefully compete for some playing time and which is always the next best thing to do right right and especially so for young had players to do it. exactly and, and so you made that move to the cosmos yeah and, so and what was that like I was very fortunate that the cosmos were you know a fantastic club with incredible people a lot of former uh, Red Bulls were there as well. You know, Giovanni Savarese was the yeah. coach of someone who I like, grew up watching yes. and I was like, this is an awesome moment. <laughs> Super Carlos cool. Carlos Mendez, who was playing, uh, Hunter Freeman was there. So a lot of players that I grew up watching. So it was, a, it was a cool moment. And to, you know, one of my college teammates, Jimmy Mulligan, who now works for the Red Bulls. So it was uh, a group that I felt comfortable going into. And um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. I was able to get games. Um, at a very high level as well in the NASL at the time. And it was kind of unfortunate because then I got hurt. I dislocated my shoulder. Yes. And I was getting pulled back to Red Bull as well for CONCACAF Champions League games. And that wasn't necessarily exactly where the Cosmos had seen me going back and forth. They wanted me there. And so unfortunately, we uh, terminated the loan and I was back with Red Bull rehabbing my shoulder, finally got back. Um, actually did well in the CONCACAF Champions League, scored a goal there. So I was like, you Good know, you don't was... play with the upper body too that's much. That's right, that's right. So, and then oh um, from there, at the end of the year, I didn't know really what was gonna happen. Jesse Marsh comes in and um, it was a bit of a career revival for me. I got back to a playing style. It was similar to, you know, a high pressing system where it's kind of very high energy and it's a system that I was comfortable in. Yeah. And you know, from, from day one, I connected with him, um, kind of aligned with his philosophy, and I feel like I fit in the system well and started to have a ton of success again and felt like I was finally getting back to the point I, I left off at my rookie year. And uh, yeah, we had some incredible moments. And honestly, for me, it was my favorite team that I played for. The group of guys that we had That's in there, amazing. the camaraderie, when you walk in the locker room every day, you're just excited to get in the locker room let alone be a professional soccer player of and get course. to And all the perks train. that come with that exactly. in and of itself. Right? Exactly. exactly, and we just had a ton of fun, and so it was my favorite year. So we're riding high, it's 2016, we'll leave it here for now, and we'll meet you back at Red Bull Arena. You ready to go to Harrison? I'm ready to go home, let's go. Let's do it. So Connor, what is one word that comes to mind when you take this all in? Home. Home. It's my second home. First, we gotta start back where we left off in Journal Square. So it's 2016, you're feeling good. That shoulder feels good. You're playing under Jesse. Talk to me about that moment before summer of 2016. Yeah, it was uh, really flying high. I think I scored my first MLS goal early on in that season. You uh, think? I, I'm pretty but sure. We know. <laughs> but we uh, Yeah, we were out in a game in LA, um, playing against the Galaxy and just one little cut. I you know, hear a little pop in my knee 
and didn't know exactly what it was. I haven't had any major injuries so far to that point in my career. And it wasn't a fun flight home, taking that red eye back that night and then ended up getting an MRI and find out I tore my ACL and the season would be done for me there. And that was probably the lowest point in my career. Luckily for me, I have a great support system around me. You know, my wife was incredible throughout that entire process and just setting little goals along the way to try to inch back, getting back on the field was great. And obviously we have a first class uh, support staff around us, the types of doctors that we have available. And um, yeah, I'm very fortunate that I was able to get back on the field the next year, but it was definitely a, a long road that was Absolutely. not easy. You know, I spoke to a lot of sports psychologists. I've done that throughout my career uh, here and there, and I feel like that is super helpful to, you know, overcome some of those barriers that maybe setting a little goal won't overcome. Getting back on this field is the best motivation of all, playing in front of those fans, and a packed Red Bull Arena is no better place on earth to, to do what you love. Absolutely, motivation and mindset, right? That's so important to note as well. You know, I was fortunate enough to come back much sooner than I expected. I was back, you know, training during preseason, um, come, February and got back on the field at the end of March, early April um, in 2017. I think my first game was here um, against Real Salt Lake and I don't even know what got me through that game because I didn't totally feel like the same player that I was. I had that first game somewhere else, how would it have done? But I think being here in front of my family, my friends, it was a big moment for everyone. I just want to note though, because take a moment to recognize your resilience. This is such an inspiring story of resilience. So all of that obviously made for you the opportunity to get back into this game that you love. When was the moment you realized maybe it's time to stop or retire or just, you know, maybe you're not sure you're ever gonna be back to where you were before? Yeah, 2019, I mean, it, it was, I felt pretty good in the beginning of the year. I picked up a couple little injuries along the way. I think even mentally was struggling with some stuff during the year. Um, and obviously my, my life totally shifts at that point as well because I'm married, have my little girl Avery at that point. And so I kind of get a new perspective on life. And so I had a little bit of a silver lining during that year because I, you know, again, had some injuries, you know, maybe wasn't traveling during the summer, um, you know, and, you know, it was fighting my way back into the roster. And uh, that's when I started opening up the talks with uh, the front office about kind of life ahead. I wanted to retire here. I wanted my entire career to, to be as a Red Bull. And so they were gracious enough to give me the role that I'm currently in yeah. today. You wear many hats with this role, so talk to me about it. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, I, I work with our alumni. Um, it's been awesome getting connect, like the players we talked about earlier, you know, your, your Clint Mathis is. Um, you know, a lot of my former teammates who, who I've played with, you know, a lot of legends who have played from this club before, getting to connect with them on a personal level, getting to bring them back and experience a game, you know, from, you know, now that they're separated from, from the club and getting to do cool little things along the way with them uh, really makes this job a, a ton of fun. There have been so many highlights for you here on this pitch, but what are some special moments that maybe we don't hear often? Doing something that I always watch players do and I wanted to do throughout my career before I before I retired was walk around the field with my child. Getting Avery down here after I scored, um, you know, getting to walk her around a couple times around Red Bull Arena, you know, always waved up to my parents. They always stayed to the end of the match until we walked around the field because they'd always be one of the only ones in 226. I'd always, you know, blow a couple kisses up to them and thank them for everything they did for me to put me here. It's more so family moments for me. I, a lot of special things on the field, but I think those are the big ones that stick out to me because they're the ones, you know, that, that mean the most to us and be able to, to really, truly make this our second home. I love it. I love stories like this. It comes complete full circle with being here, you know, supporting this organization and now what it is today, being a part of it is so, so special. So Connor, thank you so much for your time today. This has been so much fun. Thanks, Allie, this is great. Thanks yeah. for sharing my path with everyone. Absolutely, well, Connor Lade's path to Harrison, there it was. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ali Melendez. I'll see you next time right here.